This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> to see you again. Hey, how's about this for a nightmare? It's the middle of the night and there you are lying in bed, all peaceful, all calm, all still. And then suddenly you're woken by a blood-curdling scream <coughs> and you know that someone, somewhere, has come face to face with your pet monster. <coughs> and there he is. <laughs> Don't worry. He's a big softy inside all that. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. To make your own pet monster, blow a balloon up until it's roughly the size of your head and then stand it in an old bowl or shoe box with the tie at the top. Now, this will keep it nice and still. Then you need to mix some PVA glue with a bit of water and the idea is to paste it onto the balloon and then lay on strips of kitchen roll for this one. There it is, paste over the kitchen roll again and then another piece there, like that. And just go up and around the knot at the top there, but don't go over it, just go right up to it. And the idea is to cover the balloon in two layers of tissue and glue mixture. And when you've covered the whole thing, leave it to dry. And when it's dry, you'll have something that looks like that. Look at that, the two layers have gone rock hard, but you must do two layers to make it nice and hard. Then very carefully, Snip the neck of the balloon off to pop it. Ready for this? Three, two, one. Oh, I thought it was going to bang that. It was more of a... <laughs> OK, out this comes. Now, to turn this into a monster, you need to add some features made out of newspaper. Now, to make eyes on stalks, fold a sheet of newspaper along the long side and then loosely roll it into a sausage. It doesn't need to be neat or anything. Just loosely roll it and then... Give it a twist at the end to hold it into place. Then you need one of these, a ping pong ball. And hold it in the middle like that. And then just fold the newspaper across like that to trap it. And then give it a twist underneath the ball so that the ball is now half enclosed. And tape the paper into place just to hold it there like that. So that you have an eyeball in a socket at the end of a stalk, right? And you can bend the stalk a bit to add character if you want. Make as many of these as you want for your monster. Mine's going to have three. And then it's a good idea to position one eye over the hole at the top, just to close it up. See that? Hello. And then tape the eye into place, and when you've taped all three, <laughs> you will have something that looks very strange. Look at this. <laughs> there he goes. How's that for weird? <laughs> now, use lots of tape for this because you want to make it really strong. Then you need to make a long, thin newspaper ring and tape this into place for the mouth and then two small rings for the nostrils. One on there, I've put some tape on these, and one on there. Just roll up your newspaper to make them. And if you want to add a tongue, just cut the shape out of some cereal box card, perfect for this, and pad it out with a bit of newspaper and bend it a bit and then tape that into place coming out of the mouth there like that. And again, I'm just adding in some extra bits of tape, doing it quickly as usual on Art Attack, no time. You can take as long as you want and put as much tape on as you want. Now, to make some legs, just roll up some stubby newspaper sausages like that and, again, tape them to make them nice and secure and just tape them onto the side of your monster. Again, using lots of tape to make everything nice and strong and secure. Oh, see? You've got to have lots of tape for that. I'll stick another one on, but you can put, I don't know, four or five bits on there like that maybe six or seven bits. 
But if you do each of the legs in the same way, when they're all secured with plenty of tape to make them even stronger, cover them with one layer of tissue and glue papier-mâché. Again, just to make sure all of those joins are really strong. It's worth doing it because when everything's dried, it'll be nice and strong like this. Look at that. That really is quite rock hard. And now you're ready to paint your pet monster. You can use poster or acrylic paint for this. And I'm going to start with a good bogey green monster colour. There you go. Just slap that base colour on. Yuck. Gruesome. You could streak in some lighter yellow for veins and sinews. Blood red for the tongue. And when you finish painting him, just add in some detail with permanent marker and you'll have a pet monster that looks something like this. <laughs> Gruesome. And now you can place him somewhere around the house. and he can lie in waiting. <laughs> and of course, you can make any type of monster you like in any colour and any size. And you can make them as weird as you like by twisting your newspaper sausages into crazy shapes. Hey, and how about taping a few balloons together and adding long, straggly hair? <laughs> Good, aren't they? And it's your own pet monster, so make them as weird as you want and just leave them lurking and waiting to be discovered by an unsuspecting member of your family. <coughs> Works every time. Try it yourself. Oh, what a great art attack! Hello, it's me again, the head! Now, who'd have thought that such a scary-looking creature could be made out of a balloon? Now, when you're making yours, don't forget to balance your balloon in an old bowl or shoebox. That way, it makes it a lot easier to control when you're adding your layers of tissue and glue. And don't worry if you didn't catch all of that, because you can check out the website for fact sheets on this art attack and all the others in the show. Oh, yes! What's this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're See if you can guess what this big art attack is. Ah.
Do you remember drawing people like this when you were younger? <laughs> A bit babyish, right? Wrong. Believe it or not, many top cartoonists and animators still draw matchstick men to help them get action and movement into their cartoons. Look at this. Here's a cartoon of a tennis player, which I think is a bit stiff. There's no energy there, there's no action, there's no movement. Well, here's a great tip. If you draw it first as a moving matchstick man, you can get more action into the cartoon. But the one thing to remember is you must exaggerate the movement. So, okay, take a pencil and decide which way the is going to go and really move your pencil in that direction. Watch this, here we go. Across there like that. See that quick movement? Now, you use this line to create your matchstick man. So I'm going to put a hand there and I'm going to put the tennis racket there, like that. Then I'm going to put a foot down at the other end. Then with quick movements, add the other sticks to your moving matchstick man. But don't forget, exaggerate your pencil movement. Watch this. A leg, there it goes, really quickly. An arm, like that. And a head tucked down there. Look at that. And there you have a moving matchstick man, now with lots of movement and more energy. And if you aren't happy with the amount of action in your cartoon and still don't think you've got enough movement into it, throw it away, just do it again with even more energy. It'll only take you a couple of seconds. In fact, many cartoonists do lots of matchstick men until they get it right. And bear in mind, the more you move your sticks, the more your picks move. Then it's just a case of using your moving matchstick man as a guide to doing your cartoon. So, OK, first I'm just going to fill out the shape of the body, like that. Just get some thickness into these body parts here. Get the leg up there like that. And that leg down there. Just fleshing it out. Get the arm up there. Again, I'm just using quick movements for this. Don't forget the ball on the racket there. Put the racket in. See that? Then, hang some clothes on him. So, here we go. Put some clothes on there with some crease marks. And put a sleeve in his shirt there. And just flesh out the shape of his fingers. There it is. And maybe some tennis shorts there like that. And you see, I'm still doing it quite quickly. Just to keep that energy, to keep that movement in there. A leg down there like that. And then his tennis trainers. See that? And then leg down here. Again, going quite quickly with this. I'm not pondering on it, not labouring it. And that arm up there. And the hand. And finally, heads down. Look at that. He's just whacked the ball. So there's the head going in that direction. And finally, just to give it a bit more movement, I'll put some whiz lines in there just to show the movement. See that? Oh, and don't forget, some whiz lines for the ball too. And there it is, a cartoon with lots of energy and action built from a matchstick man. And it doesn't matter what you want your cartoon character to do. Just quickly do a matchstick man first and exaggerate the movement. OK, here's another quick one. Watch this. Again, just putting loads of energy into it. Loads of movement. There it is. And there's my bowler. There we go. So matchstick men aren't so babyish after all. Try it yourself. Get some action into your cartoons with moving matchstick men. And the more your sticks move, the more your picks move. Oh, what a really neat tip creating movement in your cartoons with the help of matchstick men. Hey, I've got another way to help a matchstick man move. Buy him a car! <laughs> Whoa! Here it goes! Oh, that's another art attack scrapbook completed. And do you know what? They're all full of your art attacks. And they're brilliant. Take a look at some of these. Now, Katie has gone for an interesting mottling effect on this abstract painting. I really like the clever combination of cold colours like blues, greys and purples. And Aaron's wonderful portrait has been finished off with two wide eyes surrounded with wax crane lashes. I wonder if it's a self-portrait. <laughs> and Eben's fiery mask would be great at a fancy dress party. So how did you do it, Eben? I made a mask shape from card and then glued on cardboard shapes. 
Next I painted it bright colours to create a sort of Aztec mask. Yep, great art attacks. And you know, I love that style. It's very bold and simple. And the Aztecs had another great style, a carving style, where they used to carve masks, statues, trinkets. And you know something? The Aztecs carved into wood and stone. The art attacks carve into soap. First, you need a bar of soap. Now, you can use any type of colour. I'm going to use this round one here. Then, using a sharp pencil or cocktail stick, just sketch your design into the soap. Now, I'm just going to use a very sort of aztec style face here. And just keep it simple. You don't want anything too fancy. And just press the pencil in. Feels really nice to do this, you know. And it goes there. And I'll put an eye on there. Like that. And another one there. And I think I'm going to do a sort of miserable mouth with some teeth in it. It's quite easy to do this. There you go. Now, when you've done your design, you need something to carve into the soap with. And the best tool for this is a lolly stick that's been cut off at an angle. See that? There's my lolly stick, and I've cut one off at an angle there. And if you use scissors for this, be very careful when you do it. In fact, it's always best to get someone else to do that sort of thing, isn't it? Now, you also need a few sharp pencils for this. In fact, if you find anything lying around your house that's good for this, do let me know. And just start carving. And when you're carving, it's just a case of dragging the soap away from your drawn lines, just very carefully. And as you go and just take the excess bits away, you can always put them on another block. Stick them in the shower, I say. And just go round your drawing, carving all these chunks out like that. Quite a slow process, take some time. And when you've done the whole thing, you'll end up with something that looks like that. Quite miserable, isn't it? But really authentic. <laughs> now, when you finish your carving, you could add some final decorations if you want to. Just add a dab of water to the centre of each eye. It goes there and there, just to make it sticky. And then you can pop on a couple of sequins. There, like that. Or little bits, tiny bits of beads or jewellery or whatever. There, just make sure it's stuck in. There it goes. And there it is. Good, isn't it? Your Aztec soap carving. And you can do lots of different types. You could even try more complicated shapes. And you could use different colours. And you can even use big bars of soap. Look at that. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other artefacts in the show. Try it yourself. Aztec Soap Carving. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!